Join me today in the scripture reading found in the book of Galatia, chapter number 2 and verse number 20. Galatia chapter number 2 and verse number 20 is the foundation for our lesson on today. Here the Apostle Paul, writing to the church at Galatia, says these words. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The title of our message on today, coming from this text, is the subject, Crucified with Christ. Crucified with Christ. It was 19... 73, a man by the name of Patrice Tamil, living in the Dominican Republic, decided he was going to be crucified with Christ. He read this particular scripture and he wanted to carry out this particular scripture. He made a wooden cross, went and bought some stainless steel nails and had someone to nail his hands to the cross and nail his feet to the cross. He was going to stay on the cross for some 48 hours. But after 20 hours, the trees developed a serious infection and he was taken off of the cross and taken to a hospital. But he misunderstood what being crucified is all about. You see, being crucified with Christ is not a literal crucifixion. And even if Patrice had died on that cross that day in 1973, he still would not have fulfilled this particular scripture, being crucified with Christ. Because being crucified with Christ means more than a physical death. Being crucified with Christ means more than a physical suffering and a physical crucifixion. Patrice misunderstood what God had said and what Paul says here in our text. There is a marvelous day coming. The marvelous day coming when Christ shall come again the second time, uh, I want to read to you the 
the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as recorded by Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. He said, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, uh, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we who are alive and remain shall be caught up with him in the clouds and we shall meet him in the air and we shall be forever with him. What a glorious day that is. When we shall be caught up with Christ on a cloud. Jesus Christ when he was crucified and when he went back to his father the Bible says he was caught up in the cloud and he, and he went up in the cloud. And the Bible says here that when Jesus comes again, he, he's coming back on the cloud. And we shall get on the cloud with him. Glory, hallelujah. But before you get on the cloud, you got to get on the cross. That's my message today. Before we get on the, on the cloud, we must first get on the cross. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ rose on Sunday morning. But he was crucified on Friday. And before he rose on Sunday, he was crucified on Friday. And I tell you, my friend, you better be ready. You better be ready to be crucified. You better be ready to be to get on the cross before you get on the cloud. That's the message today. Being crucified with Christ. You see, Paul was crucified with Christ. Oh, yes, Paul said, I, I am crucified with Christ. But you got to know this. You got to know that Paul's name was changed from Saul to Paul. And throughout the Bible, when someone's life was drastically changed by God, God will change their name. Change the name of Abram to Abraham. Change the name of Jacob to Israel. Change the name of Simon Peter to Cephas. Yes, he changed the name of Paul. Did you not know Paul was a murderer? He, his name was Saul. He was Saul the persecutor. He killed Christians. He threw them in jail and his name was Saul, but Paul changed his name, but when Paul met Jesus, he became Paul. He was no longer Saul. And so what Paul was saying here is that it was Saul that was crucified. Saul was crucified on the cross. The old man Saul, that old murderer, that old hater, that old persecutor he was crucified when Paul said I am crucified with Christ he's saying Saul was crucified that old man was crucified my friend we have the same testimony that old person that we were before we became Christian that person is crucified the old me was crucified the old man that used to sin, he was crucified. The old, the old man, the old me that used to drink, he's crucified. The old man that used to perform all kinds of evil things, he's been crucified. The adulterer, the fornicator, the liar, the cheater, the stealer, he's been crucified. He no longer lives. He's been crucified. I want you to know this. Crucifixion is painful and crucifixion is suffering. 
Oh yes, crucifixion, the literal crucifixion was a, a painful, a slow, painful death. And when Jesus was crucified, it was a slow, agonizing, painful death. And when we are crucified, it means that we are going to suffer as Christ suffered. If you are not willing to suffer, my friend, you can't be crucified. Because crucifixion simply means that we, we are ready to suffer as Christ suffered. This is what the Bible says. Let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. But if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but, but glorify God on this behalf. Did you hear that? Oh, there are two ways to suffer in this world. You can suffer as a sinner or you can suffer as a saint. Take your poison. You will suffer. Suffering is mandatory in this world. Every man is going to suffer. And you have the choice of, of suffering as a saint or suffering as a sinner. You, you choose your poison. How are you suffering today? How are you suffering today? And the text says, don't be ashamed to suffer. Don't be ashamed to suffer with Jesus. And don't be ashamed to claim Jesus as your Lord. Don't you be ashamed. I'm afraid, my friend, we have so many Christians today who are ashamed to own Jesus. I'm afraid there are so many Christians who are ashamed in public to own Jesus. There are so many Christians who are ashamed to call his name. There are so many Christians who are ashamed to sing his praises. There are so many Christians who are ashamed to pray in public. There are so many Christians who are ashamed to say amen. Can you say amen? They are ashamed of Jesus. But Jesus said these words one day in Luke chapter 9 in verse number 26 of Luke. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me and my word, I, when I get before my father in heaven one day, I, I'm going to be ashamed of you. How can you, how can you be ashamed of Jesus? After everything he's done for you, he Died for you. He suffered for you. He, he was crucified for you. And how can you be ashamed of Jesus? You ought to be ashamed to be ashamed. The Bible says we ought not to be ashamed to suffer with him. Because the Bible says if we suffer with him, we shall be raised with him. Yes, my friend, suffering. Jesus declares the nature of our crucifixion and our suffering. Notice what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10 and, and verse number 38. Jesus says, and he that taketh his cross and follow after me, or he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Did you hear Jesus? If you are not willing to suffer with me, you are not worthy of me. If you are not willing to, 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 to suffer on the cross, you can't have the crown. You are not willing to endure the pain, you can't have the gain. If you are not willing to Endure the hurt, you can't have heaven. You, you got to be ready to suffer, my friends. If you want to be a child of God, you got to be willing. You got to be ready to suffer. I want to tell you this. You already know that crucifixion is death. Yes, crucifixion is death. And uh, 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 and the man that tried to be crucified 
Oh, yes, he, he didn't go through with the crucifixion there in the Dominican Republic. And he, took, he was taken down from the cross. But I want you to know the real crucifixion means death. You're putting to death the old person. This is what the Bible says in Romans chapter 6. In verse number 6 and 7, Paul said these words, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin may be destroyed. I tell you, crucifixion means death. You are putting to death your old nature. You are putting to death your old, your old person, the old person that you used to be. You are putting that person to death. Crucifixion means death. The old man is a dead man. I said the old man is a dead man. Listen to what the Bible says again. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 2, the, the Bible says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? How can we who are Dead to sin, live any longer therein. You, you are, you are dead to sin. I've never seen a dead man sin. I've been to a lot of funerals, but I've never seen a dead man sin. I, I've never seen a dead man committing a, a fornication. I've never seen a dead man drunk. I, I've never seen a dead man lie and cheat. I've never seen a dead man. Sin, do you get the picture? You are dead. How can you live in sin when you're dead? You are dead to sin. In that blockbuster movie called Ghost, do you remember? You remember Patrick Swayze played the star. He was a star in that movie and he was killed. He came back as a ghost. He wanted to know how he could do certain things as a ghost and he wanted to know how he could move objects as a ghost and he met an old veteran ghost down at the train station. You remember that scene? He was trying to move a penny that was on the, the pavement there and he took his hand and he tried to move the penny but he could not move the penny and the old veteran ghost said these words, you can't do that because you are dead. That's my line today. You can't sin because you're dead. You can't, you can't do that. You're dead. You can't, you can't live in adultery because you're dead. You, you can't keep on getting drunk because you are dead. You can't keep on living in sin. A dead man can't sin. A dead man can't live in sin. Oh yes, you can sin, but you can't live in sin. And there's a difference. That's a difference. You can't do that. Because you are dead. And then Jesus says that crucifixion is denial. Denying yourself. Self-denial. That's what Jesus says. Jesus says, if any man come to me, he must first deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me, Jesus says. It simply means to sign your life over to Jesus. Self-denial and crucifixion simply means I'm going to deny myself. I'm going to sign my life over to Jesus. He's the master of my life now. This is what the Bible says. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, for you have been bought with the price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are his. You belong to Jesus. Now there is self-denial because you have been crucified. You don't own yourself anymore. 
If you've been crucified, if you are a Christian, if you belong to Jesus Christ, you don't own yourself anymore. You have denied yourself if you want to be crucified. And there is something else about crucifixion. Listen to this. Crucifixion is daily. I said crucifixion is daily. Oh, yes, we crucified the old man when we became a Christian. Oh, yes, we, uh, we crucified and we put to death the old man when we became a Christian. But, but do you not know that, that you have to crucify the old man every day? Jesus said these words again. Listen to what Jesus says. And in Luke chapter 9 and verse number 23, Jesus said these words. If any man, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. Take up his cross daily, every day, every day, every day. You got to take up your cross. You got to crucify the old man every day. Because every day the old man will rise again. And so every day, every day, every day, every morning you get up, you got to get your hammer. You got to get your nail. You got to get your cross. You got to, you got to crucify the old man every day. You got to nail him to the cross every day, every day of your life. Because every day the old man, the old man is going to rise. And every day, every day, every day you got to crucify him all over again. He will rise every day in your life. So Paul says, I've crucified Paul. I've crucified Saul, the murderer, the, the persecutor, the, the hater. I've crucified him. But he says, nevertheless. I live, but not I, but Christ living in me. Now Christ is being glorified. Oh, yes, I live, but not I, but it's Christ living in me, Paul says. And when you look at Paul's life, and when you look at our life, you, you used to see Christ living in us. Paul says, when you look at my life, you shouldn't see Paul, you shouldn't, shouldn't see Saul, but you ought to see Jesus Christ living inside of me. My friends, every time someone, every time the world sees you, they ought to see Christ. You ought to look like Christ, you ought to walk like Christ, you ought to think like Christ. Because the old man has been crucified and Christ is living in you. Christ is living in you. I got a question, Paul. Apostle Paul, I got a question. Why are you suffering like this? Paul, Paul, why, why, why have you crucified yourself. Why are you suffering for Jesus? And Paul says these words from the text. He says, I have been, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but not I. Christ who is living in me. The life I now live, I live by Christ, who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul said, the reason I'm, I'm doing all of this, the reason I've crucified myself, the reason why I'm suffering is because Jesus loved me and he gave himself for me. That's the reason I'm, I've crucified myself. That's the reason I'm suffering with Jesus. Oh, the power of love, the power of the love of God, the power of the love of Jesus. Oh, the Bible said these words. Listen to what the Bible said. The Bible says we love him before because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. Love begets love. Love stimulates love. Love produces love. If you love, if you love me, 
you are going to make me love you. If I love you, I will make you love me. I have a friend. Oh, she has a husband. Oh, she has a husband, and she loved that man. But it wasn't always so when she first when she first saw the man. She said, yeah, "He, he, he! I just hated him. I, he, he, he was repulsive. But he kept on coming around, and he, he kept on giving me gifts. He, he called me on the phone every day. He gave me gifts for my birthday and the Christmas. I'm, he told me how much he loved me. And then one day I, I fell in love with him, and now I love him. I love him because he first loved me." Oh, the love of God. But we are saying today we love Christ because Christ first loved us. Yes, he did. I close with this. An officer by the name of Peter O'Hanlon was an officer in London, England, and he was patrolling one night and he ran up on a little boy who was crying because he had gotten lost. Little boy said, I'm lost. The officer began to call some street name, but the little boy couldn't recognize the name. Where you, where you live, little man? He said, I don't know. What street do you live on? He said, I don't know. He began to call names of street. I don't know. He began to call businesses and, and hotels. The little boy kept on crying. I don't know. Then the officer looked at an old church building in the, in the heart of town, which had a, a big high cross on it and and he says do you you do you live near that cross do you do live near that church i want you to hear what the little boy said he dried his teary eyes and the little boy said take me to the cross and i'll find my way home glory hallelujah take me to the cross and i'll find my way home oh my friend that's the testimony of every christian Take me to the cross and I'll find my way home. Take me to the cross and I'll find my way to the eternal home. Take me to the cross and I'll find my way to the heavenly home. Just take me to the cross. And I'll find my way home. Take me to the cross. The only way, the only way that we can get to heaven is by going to the cross and being crucified on the cross. That's the only way to heaven, being crucified, being crucified with Jesus, getting on the cross with Jesus and suffering with Jesus and, and doing all the things that Jesus did. That's the way we are crucified with Christ. And that's the only way to heaven, my brothers and sisters. That's the only way. There is no other way. We got to be crucified with Jesus. We got to be crucified on the cross. Crucified with Christ. And that brings us to the Lord's Supper today. Every Sunday we bring the Lord's Supper to you. To those of you who cannot go to worship service, we bring the Lord's Supper to you. We bring the Lord's Supper to you today. Let's bow. Oh, Jesus Christ, oh, Lord, we thank you for Jesus dying on the cross. These emblems represent his body and his blood. Help us, oh, God, to be worthy, worthy of his life and worthy of his death. We thank you, oh, Lord. Thank you for this bread. Thank you for this fruit of the vine. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Jesus said again, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And then he said, this is my blood shed for you. This do in remembrance of me. The broken body, the shed blood, represents the death of Jesus Christ. Are you crucified? That's the question we leave with you today. Have you been crucified. Before we leave, we'd like to thank you for your contribution.
for supporting the work of the Lord. Thank you for your giving. May God bless you today. May God richly bless you in the name of Jesus Christ.